Greg, how we doing? Good, thanks, Brian. How are you? Good, busy. Uh, wanted to debrief with you a little bit about the conversation we had with uh, Margot today on the uh, goodwill yeah. impairment analysis. Yep. Yeah, I think she seems very competent, involved with what her team does. Um, very detail-oriented individual, which you know I appreciate and support. She did give us, you know, a memo. Let me Great. pass that Thank off you. to you. And, and to point out on the memo, you know, there's sign-offs in the corner indicating that she's reviewed it. We did talk about it. it does say draft. She indicated that that was final. Um, so we might need to go back to her and see if uh, we can get the draft off so p people don't question it or, right. or wonder if it is actually a final thing. Um, walk me through the revenue projection assumptions, Brian, if you would. Um, I'm interested to know how Margo... Uh, got comfortable yeah. with the revenue projections and, and tell me about the data that they used uh, and how she considered the completeness and, and accuracy of the data. Yeah, so two key points. As it relates to the, the buildup of the projections and what is ultimately shown in the memo as their final discounted cash flow, I would say the revenue projections is that there, there are two spots or two areas that we're going to need to piece together to get the evidence to support the rigor of the review. Uh, the first point would be is they didn't use any or identify any thresholds. Uh, what Margot kind of indicated is for herself as well as the business units that come together to build up the regu revenue projections, they're really relying on their business knowledge and understanding of the industry. Um, I'd also point out that the primary control in this process was a meeting control. There's no minutes to the meetings. They didn't keep minutes to the meetings. It, it's challenging to figure out how management um, questioned their ultimate outcome because ultimately that memo kind of supports their conclusion. Did you have a chance to meet with the business unit leaders so, individually? So not yet. I okay. think, you know, if I think about the levels of evidence that we would want to go through, whether it be reperformance, um, observation, or management inquiry, I think there's an opportunity for us to do some further inquiry. I'd still like to know um, if, if Margo challenged the assumptions that the the business unit leaders made yeah. when they were when they were building the projections, um, it, you know, really uh, how she how she pushed back. It may be here, um, some of it may be here in the memo. Um, what about contrary uh, information or, or evidence? Yeah, no, I mean, we obviously we asked about that. I, I would say that the memo is management's support of their conclusion. Um, they did not really go in depth, and, and when I asked Margo about it, she really did not believe that there was any contrary evidence out there, whether it be board presentations or anything else that might the company might have produced that might be contrary to what they've indicated in, from a projection standpoint. Okay. Um, I did indicate to Margo that from an audit standpoint, we would have to look at that right. uh, and see if there is contrary, and we might come back to her and ask further questions. But as it relates to evidence within the memo, there's no okay. contrary audit evidence in there. Okay. Um, did they do a sensitivity analysis? Uh, no sensitivity analysis. Okay. They felt comfortable with their uh, with what their numbers were and, okay. and their knowledge base to conclude on those numbers. No. So, uh, no, no sensitivity okay. analysis to support. The, the team is working through the substantive testing. Yeah. Where do they stand with the with the testing? Well, uh, I think I actually just I asked someone to send me a note on that because I knew I was meeting with you. Let me see what they sent me here. Hold on a sec. Uh, oh, that is, that's not good. That's not what I was expecting. Uh, my uh, Real-time information. Okay, what do, you got, what, do you, what do you got for me, Brian? Well, yeah, um, so it appears that uh, <laughs> the team did the analysis and there's a formula error in the, in the DCF it doesn't look in like the calculation? that. In the calculation? In the calculation. It does not look like, at least in the brief yeah. email that I, uh, I got there, that, that it uh, changes the conclusion or that it's material. Okay. Um, but I think we need to think about it as it relates to the overall review process. Shouldn't Margot's review of the analysis have, have captured that, caught that error? My gut reaction is it, it should. Right. Um, or should it have been maybe at a lower level I, someone have the, caught yeah, it. the director of financial um, report. But we need to get further evidence on yeah, the well, overall let's see process. If, if there's a control activity missing. You know, it relates to the validating the, the accuracy of that. So. All right. Okay. Well, I, so I, I think I have my to-dos on yeah. where I need to go. Um, so let me do that, and then hopefully sometime early to mid-next week, we'll, we'll kind of wrap this up Very and try good. and put it 
put it to bed. Great, great. Appreciate it. Greg, thanks for the time. Greg, doing a great job. Tell the team, uh, appreciate all the work, and we'll see you for lunch Friday. Perfect. Thanks okay. so much. Thanks, Brian.